Hello, welcome to today's Monday Manna. As always, we pray that we find you in good health and in good spirits. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we bless you today. We honor you. We exalt you. We extol you as the Most High God. There is none above you. There is none that can compare to you. Truly, there is none like you. You alone are the self-existent Lord God Jehovah. You are the Almighty God, the Omnipotent God, the Omniscient God, the Omnipresent God, and there is none like you. Thank you for the gift of salvation that you bestowed upon mankind through the sacrifice of your son. And thank you also for the giving of your spirit that we may be led into the perfect will of God. We bless you today. We honor you today. This is the day that you have made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Unto your name, to your name alone, be all of the glory, the honor, and the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen again. Truly unto God belongs all of the glory, the honor, and the praise. There is none like him. You can search all over and you will find that there's none like him. You can try to find a similarity in a bottle. You can try to find a similarity in a joint, you can try to find a similarity in a whorehouse. You can try to find a similarity in any other avenue that you might choose to go down. But at the end of your journey, you will come to know that there is none like the Most High God. There's none like the Lord God, Jehovah. Amen. So why not just start out with him and save yourself all of that trouble? <laughs> to God be the glory. We're continuing our series on prayer. Uh, we've gone through a whole lot of different aspects of prayer, different types of prayer. Right now we are focusing on praying in the spirit or praying in tongues. They are one in the same. And we're going to share some things today um, that will help cause you to be increased in faith and also cause you I believe by the spirit to desire the things of the spirit. Again, we've been talking about three different categories. Those who have shunned praying in tongues and said it's not for us for some reason or another. And then those who had an initial infilling of the spirit. And so you did pray in the spirit on that initial infilling, but you haven't been building up yourself on your most holy faith, praying in the spirit. Uh, for quite some time. And then there are those who have embraced the reality of praying in the spirit. You've had some experiences with God in praying in the spirit, and it draws you to come into the water even all the more. Jesus said it this way at that great feast, and he lifted up his voice and said, he was compelling them to come to, the, to him. Out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. And he was speaking of the Holy Spirit, amen, who had not yet been poured out upon the believers because Pentecost had not come. But on the day of Pentecost, amen, the God who answers by fire, answered by fire on the day of Pentecost and poured out his spirit. Cloven tongues of fire sat upon each one of them in that upper room. There was no discrimination between male or female, Jew or Gentile, Greek or barbarian or Scythian or slave. There was no difference between any of them. Amen. They all came to receive and every one of them received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. What does that say about us today? That was done thousands of years ago, but our God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. That means whosoever will, even in this day, you may receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit as well. You can have an infilling of the Holy Spirit as well. And I'm not talking about a salvation infilling. All of those who accept Jesus as Lord and Savior, all of those who confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father, you've accepted him as your Lord, you submit to him as your um, Savior, and Lord, yes, there is an impartation of the Spirit of God that comes upon you accepting and receiving Jesus as Lord and Savior. There is no debate about that. But what I am encouraging you about 
is, let me say we, amen, I'm not in this by myself, but what we are encouraging you about is the infilling of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues, praying in the Spirit. That's what we are encouraging you about. Wouldn't it be interesting? Have you ever thought about it or asked yourself the question, why would God even want us to be filled with the Spirit? Just think about that while I take a sip of my water. Amen. <laughs> Thank you. Why would he even want us? Why is it an issue? Why did God see that it was necessary for us to be filled with his spirit, for us to be filled with the spirit, with the evidence of speaking in tongues? Why would he consider that a necessity? Well, let me say this. If he did, and he did, find it necessary for this to be a vital part of the body of Christ, the body of believers, amen, those who have accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior, and God saw fit that it was absolutely necessary, then I would say he knows the benefits that come with this infilling of the Holy Spirit with the evidence, evidence of speaking in tongues or praying in the Spirit. And I'm not talking about corporately, I'm talking about in your personal private time, your quiet time, your devotional time, whatever you call it, your closet time alone with the Lord. Somewhere our all-knowing God sees the benefits of praying in the Spirit or praying in tongues. He knows the benefits. Amen. And those of us who do it on a regular basis, we have experienced the benefits. My intention is to encourage those who have shunned this gift and those who have not embraced the gift fully. Amen. I'm talking to all of us. And so there are benefits to praying in tongues and praying in the spirit. I don't know how many times I, I could say that. If I could say it in Japanese, I would. If the Lord gave me the gift of a diverse kinds of tongues right now and all kinds of languages, I would say the same thing because it's that important to get it out to all nations of the land. There are benefits to praying in the spirit and praying in tongues. Let me ask you this. How many of you, um, sometimes you feel like you have come to the end of what it is that you want to say? You've come to the end of your prayer. You know, you've said everything that was on your mind or on your heart. And then you look at your watch and you realize you've only been in prayer about five to 10 minutes. And in five to 10 minutes, in your own understanding, you were able to say everything that was on your heart and on your mind. And yet on the inside, you feel like there was so much more that you wanted to say. There was so much more that you wanted to release. There was so much more that you wanted to offer to God in prayer. But you came to the end of yourself. One of the benefits of praying in tongues and praying in the spirit is that it is an endless stream. There is no end to it. The only time it stops is when you stop praying. Amen. That's when it stops. But then you can pick it back up again anytime you get ready. Yes, that is exactly what I said. Anytime you get ready. Now, somebody might say that's not true. That can't possibly be true. Well, let me ask you this. When you go to your prayer closet and you're praying in your known tongue, you're praying in your native tongue, your cultural tongue, whatever that is, and you start praying, and then you come to the end of that and you stop praying. Let's say the next day comes up. Don't you go back into that same prayer again? Don't you have the ability then to go back into your prayer closet the next day and begin to pray again in your own understanding? And then you do that the next day and you do that the next day and you do that the next day because you have the ability to do that. Well, if you're filled with the spirit, with the evidence of speaking in tongues and the evidence of praying, well, praying in the spirit or praying in tongues, you have that same ability, amen, to take that into your prayer closet day after day after day after day after day. Yes, you absolutely do. 
Amen. And so one of the benefits, we're going to talk about two benefits today, but one of those benefits today is magnifying God. Praying in tongues gives you the avenue to magnify God. Listen to this account in Acts chapter 10. It's speaking about two men, Cornelius and Peter, both of them on separate spectrums of life. Amen. Peter is a believer and Cornelius was a centurion, a Roman soldier who had a hundred men under him. So he had some leadership authority and power over the lives of other people. And yet the Bible says he was a devout man, which means that he went to church. Basically, from our perspective, he went to church. Amen. He went to church. He was a devout man, um, one that feared God with all his house, which gave much alms to the people. So he was a devout man. He feared God and he wasn't selfish. He gave offerings and alms to the people and prayed to God always. This man who had been going to church and was not filled with the spirit, he had an encounter. He had a vision. He saw in a vision, evidently about the ninth hour of the day, an angel of God coming into him and saying unto him, Cornelius. And when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, what is it, Lord? And he said unto him, thy prayers and thine alms are come up for a memorial before God. God hears your prayers. He hears your prayers and he sees your giving as well. Amen. And so all of this was happening on one side of the, uh, well, let's say one side of the street for Cornelius. He was having this encounter with this angel who was sent from God to go and encourage him that God had heard his prayers. God had seen his giving. And because of that, because of his devoutness, his faithfulness, God was getting ready to impart an impartation to Cornelius and his whole house. And so then we come to Peter and Peter is up on top of a roof. He's just waiting for, you know, whoever was doing the cooking that day. He's just waiting for them to finish cooking this meal. He's tired. He's hungry. Amen. He's waiting for them to finish cooking. And he goes up to the rooftop, gets up to the rooftop and decides to, you know, just relax up there. And yet he falls into a trance. Now, remember, Peter is a believer. He is a believer of the Lord Jesus Christ and he is filled with the spirit. And he too is having an encounter. He begins to have this vision of um, this large sheet that is let down on verse, um, I'm in Acts chapter 10. Um, I'll start at verse 10. I'll start at verse 9. On the morrow, as they went on their journey, this is Peter. And drew nigh unto the city, Peter went up upon the housetop to pray about the sixth hour. And he became very hungry and would have eaten, but while they made ready, he fell into a trance. And saw heaven opened and a certain vessel descending unto him, as it had been a great sheet knit at the four corners and let down to the earth. Wherein were all manner of four-footed beasts of the earth, and wild beasts, and creeping things, and fowls of the air. And there came a voice to him, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, Not so, Lord, for I have never eaten, it, I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. And the voice spoke unto him again the second time, What God hath cleansed, that Call not thou common. This was done thrice and the vessel was received up again into heaven. Now, Peter, even though he was doubting about what this vision meant, the Holy Spirit said to him, there's going to come three men looking for you. Go with them for I have sent them. So they come and they knock on the door and Peter goes with them and they wind up at Cornelius's house. Well, Cornelius had already had an encounter with an angel and see God is setting up something through Peter for Cornelius and his house. Amen. And so here it is in verse 44, Peter is expounding to them as he's talking to Cornelius and them. He opened his mouth and he said, um, let's see. So he gets up and he goes with them. In Acts 10, 29, he says, Therefore came I unto you without gainsaying, as soon as I was sent for, I asked therefore for what intent you have sent for me. See, the angel told Cornelius to send for Peter. And so Peter has been sent for, now he's at Cornelius' house, and Peter's saying to him, Hey, what did you send for me for? Why did you send for me? Amen? And um, Cornelius said, 
Thy prayer and said Cornelius, thy prayer is heard in thine alms. Hold on a second. Where am I at? <laughs> Uh, verse 30, and Cornelius said, four days ago, I was fasting until this hour. And at the ninth hour, I prayed in my house and behold, a man stood before me in bright clothing and said, Cornelius, thy prayer is heard and thine alms are had in remembrance in the sight of God. Send therefore to Joppa and call hither Simon, whose surname is Peter. He is lodged in the house of one Simon, a tanner by the seaside, who when he cometh shall speak unto thee. Immediately therefore I sent to thee, and thou hast well done that thou art come. Now therefore are we all here present before God to hear all things that are commanded thee of God. We are ready to hear whatever it is that God has commanded you to say to us. Now that is an open heart. We're ready to hear whatever it is that God has told you to tell us. Are you ready to hear whatever it is that God has told me to tell you? Amen. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. See, God is no respecter of persons. Praying in the spirit, praying in tongues is not just for some. It's not just for those higher echelon, those upper echelon, those whatever you think is the highest level that you can get in God. It's not just for them. It is for whosoever. The same as salvation. Jesus came to save us all. Amen. The Holy Spirit came to fill us all. There is no separation or division because of gender or because of culture or because of skin color or because of dialect or because you've got blonde hair and, and I've got brown and you've got green eyes and I've got blue. No, it's none of that. There is no difference in God who can receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues or praying in tongues. It's for whosoever will. And there is an opportunity and a benefit in that praying in tongues and praying in the Spirit whereby you can release yourself and begin to magnify God. Listen to this. I'm going to skip because there's quite a bit. And so in verse 44, Acts 10 and 44, while Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. The Holy Ghost fell on all of them which heard the word. Amen. And they of the circumcision, which believed, these are believers, were astonished as many as came with Peter. Now these were Jewish believers. Amen. They of the circumcision, the circumcision, those were Jewish believers. Amen. And they of the circumcision, which believed were astonished as many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles, them pagan folks, them heathen folks on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. The gift of the Holy Ghost. For how did they know that? Listen to this. They knew that because of something. Because the Holy Ghost is invisible. He's not tangible as far as I can touch a remote control or lift up this bottle or, you know, tap on this computer. He's not tangible like that. He's invisible. Amen. So how did they know how did they know that the gift of the Holy Ghost was poured out upon them? You can tell I'm passionate about this subject, and I am indeed passionate about this subject because it's for everybody. I don't want anybody to miss out, and neither does God. No, no believer should be missing out on the greater things of God. Amen? And so how did they know? They knew that um, on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost because they heard them speak with tongues, initial infilling. Yes, they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. They heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Now they might have been had a sense of magnifying God at one level or so, that, you know, before all of this happened, you know, because, you know, even if you're devout and you go to church and you haven't had an encounter with God, there's some level of, you know, that you, you feel like you're making a difference in the spirit or that, you know, you're giving God your all, but they, they were filled with the spirit. They began to speak in tongues. 
and began to magnify God. Why? Because God had done something great for them. When you think about the great things that God has done for you, don't you want to magnify him? Don't you want to take that to a higher level, a deeper depth? Don't you want to spread it wide in your own heart as you magnify the God of your salvation, the God who has poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost upon you? It is for whosoever. I said I was going to do two benefits today. The other benefit, and I'll just whet your appetite for it because I feel like I've gone quite longer than I wanted to do today. Amen. But I pray that all things were said according to the will of God. But the other um, benefit, and we'll talk about this next week. Um, hopefully I'll have Pat Pastor Hutchinson on as well because he, he can testify about this. Um, but we're going to talk about um, the benefit of boldness. There are some who may feel a little timid in their walk and they may feel a little, you know, kind of shrink back a little bit when things begin to be a little bit overwhelming. But in the spirit of God, praying in tongues builds up a Holy Ghost boldness on the inside of you. We'll talk about that next week. Amen. Thank you for joining me today for today's Monday Manna and learning that in the spirit, praying in the spirit, amen, it will release on the inside of you the very ability to magnify God, to glorify God. Hallelujah. Bless your name, oh God. You're worthy of the glory and the honor and the praise. You're magnificent, oh Lord, oh ancient of days. You're holy and true, oh God, and there is truly none like you. None like you. Hallelujah. Just allow you to magnify the God of your salvation once again. If you have shoved this to the side and you said it's not for you, I believe I've talked to you long enough and strong enough, amen, to at least begin to birth a curiosity on the inside of you. Again, take it to God in prayer. That's what Cornelius was doing and God responded to him. Take it to God in prayer. He's not going to lie to you. There's no reason for him to lie to you or mislead you or cause you to be, you know, uh, in a place of doubt and confusion. No, he loves you too much for that. Amen. So if you, if you still have questions, you still have concerns, take it to your man of God or take it to somebody, you know, who, you know, praise in the spirit or let the Lord lead you to somebody who can help expound on these things a little deeper with you and for you. Amen. Those of you who had an initial infilling just like they, they did, they had an initial infilling and it was so impactful that they began to magnify God. But in the foot, the infilling of the spirit, praying in the spirit and praying in tongues, you can magnify God every day. It doesn't have to be an initial infilling. And you can pray in the spirit or pray in tongues on any given day as long as you choose. As long as you choose, don't let nobody lie to you and say it's only for the upper echelon. It's only for, you know, those people in high places. No, no, it's not. It's for everybody. The same blood that cleanses everybody that comes to Christ, the same spirit fills everybody that comes to Christ. Amen. So receive, receive, just receive the infilling of the Holy Spirit. And my prayer is that this week, you will spend time praying in tongues. You will spend time praying in the spirit. Watch and see what God will do on your behalf. Thank you for joining me today for this Monday Manna. I'm very passionate about this subject. Amen. And I, and I don't apologize for it. I'm very passionate about this. Amen. And so I, my prayer is that God would reveal himself to you, that he would make his um, truth known to you. Amen. And that this reality of the infilling of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues anytime you want to, all day long if you choose, 
that he will make that so clear to you and you will see a marked difference in your walk with Christ, even on the inside, how you feel about other people, how you react to situations and circumstances. I'm telling you, this is the key. It is one of the keys to the kingdom, amen, that infills us and gives us the power, the might, and the authority that we all need in these last and evil days. Until we meet again, God richly bless you and keep you in the Holy Ghost. Amen.